Okay, hey. Uh, how's everybody doing? Look at all, you can't really see that, can you? What about now? Now? No. She's got butterflies in her windshield. Fancy. Finally, got some rain and uh, some coffee, most importantly. Just out running a few errands. I uh, need to get some salt for my pool. It's a saltwater pool. Hopefully they still have it. It's like just barely August and they're already clearing all the summer stuff out and putting up the fall and Christmas stuff. It's frustrating, but it is what it is. Look at that. Just dead trees everywhere. Oh, from that last winter, it was just, it was so bad. That, but yeah, you see that? And it was like 99 or 100 yesterday. What? A nice improvement. I'm gonna take advantage of that and go home and try and get a lot of yard work done while it's not too terribly hot. It's supposed to keep raining though, so I have to kind of do it in between things, which isn't a big deal. Oh, my Pruvianus has some buds on it that look like, I mean they just look like flower buds, but it's really cool. I'll show you guys when we get back to the house. I gotta get pool salt and then I have to vote. It's voting day, so I'm gonna do that and then We'll maybe do some gardening stuff. We'll see. Have the pool salt. Alright, I know I was just ripping on all the fall stuff being out too early, but I mean, low key. Some of it's kind of cute. I mean, look at this. Oh, that is so sparkly. Oh, where's the boo one? I want to see that one. Problem is, if I buy them now, I know I'm gonna forget where they are when it's time to put them out. But if I don't get them now, these will be sold out by September because people buy their stuff too early. I know this is what I'm supposed to like, but sparkles. Although I actually, I really do. I do like that. That would be for Thanksgiving. When did I start liking throw pillows? What's happening to me? They have a really good deal on replacement heads for your Sonicare, if you were wondering. Oh my gosh. I want to be a dinosaur. Those have always looked so uncomfortable, though. It might be fun to make a plant video as a dinosaur. No, it's time to go. Need to stop it. Okay, it rained all day, which is awesome. But look at... Aren't they cute? Man, these flower buds grow like crazy. I just wanted to make sure to show them now because I'm going to keep showing them over the next couple days to see how much they grow. That's really all that is. Why are they pink? <laughs> Hello, sunset. I wish I could cut the trees down, like, just right now, just for the sunset. Okay, it's a couple days later. Can we do a side-by-side? -side? Is that something I can do? I guess that kind of depends on how good of a job I did filming this before. I don't even remember. Those buds are... Definitely bigger than they were a couple days ago, that's for sure. I need to go get some new snippers. Mine, I keep sharpening them, it's not really making a difference. I need to, I mean, you don't have to. This Daisy video came out a few days ago, like two videos, I think, prior to this one. You don't have to deadhead them, but I just, I like the way they look a lot tidier if you cut the dead ones off. So I need to do that, but I'm not going to bore you guys with that. That's not that big a deal. I don't buy, like, nice, expensive snippers. Pruners, that is. It's just, it's too humid here. Every single nice pair I've ever gotten, if I leave them outside for like two hours, within a few weeks they start to rust. I know they make like a spray you can put on them to protect them. I just, I haven't seen it for sale in a while, so I need to maybe give that a shot. Maybe I'll go ahead, see if I can't find that and get a decent pair instead of just getting the 8 to $10 ones. But honestly, the 8 to $10 ones usually last me a couple of years, so... I don't know. I don't use them for really thick branches, though. Oh, look at that passion fruit, though. This isn't really an edible variety. I mean, I guess you could eat it. It's not going to taste very good. This is the incense passion flower. The one that doesn't like to focus. Oh, smells so good. Why is my camera not autofocusing? Uh, and I don't know why that I haven't been showing the passion flowers in the garden tours. That's weird. So... Here's what I'm tackling this week. This is going to be a shorter vlog, by the way, depending on how much I ramble. But it should be shorter because uh, I have a lot of other stuff to edit, and it, it's, it's a long story. Everything's fine. It's just, it doesn't matter. I have some other things planned that'll be in 
upcoming videos. Tomorrow I'm going to uh, like a sunflower maze. Should be pretty cool. I don't know uh, how many sunflowers there will still be on, like how many will still be in bloom. I can't talk today. I'm so sorry. I can't, I can never talk. What am I talking about? But yeah, so, uh, but that'll be next week, and because that's Saturday, the video comes out, and then I'm going to the Flora Borealis, which is this really neat thing in my botanical gardens, where basically they light the garden up, and it's like a light show, and it's supposed to be really, really cool, and uh, that will probably also be in next week's vlog. Maybe. I may have to do those in separate videos, because I need to tackle, tackle, I need to tackle the cactus garden area, and that's going to take an entire vlog, because it's a lot of planters, so... Uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll figure it out. You'll get to see it. It'll be pretty. But yeah, anyway, so this right here, this entire corner. Oh, that's high. That's just shadow. Man, I really, I have this pot buried. Okay, that's better. So I have all these guys that have been surrounding it. Some of these need to be repotted. That hibiscus needs a new pot. This one shouldn't need a new pot, but I think maybe it's just not getting hit by my drippers. It's not really the point here. So, what I need to do here is fill this in with annuals. I usually do this in May as soon as it's delivered, but if you've been following things, there was a big family wedding in the beginning of June, and I just, I didn't get to it because the palm trees that get stored during the wintertime in a greenhouse by a company out here, they didn't get delivered till two days before the wedding. I didn't have time to get to it, and then other things became a priority. And it is a little bit late to be planting things, I suppose. I mean, I keep planting up until, like, <laughs> probably a few weeks before frost, just depending on what I'm doing. But basically what I have here is whenever I get my annuals in the springtime, I always buy one or two extra of just about everything. Because, as I mentioned before, they just they stop selling them very, very, very quickly. So it's, you know, first come, first grab. Is that the saying? First come, first... I don't know. It's a snooze-you-lose kind of situation. However... When you keep these little four-inch annuals in these pots for a really long time, they uh, they don't fare very well. Luckily, these are all quick-growing plants that I can just cut them, and within no time, they'll bounce back. So in here, I have some of the leftover overflow coleus, and I have a six-pack of sun impatience that are... They're, they're looking really bad. I'll show you. Wow, they look worse now than they did, like, ten minutes ago. So these need to be watered. But yeah, see that? Like, they're just... They're leggy. They need to be cut back. Ideally, what I would have done here, had I had the time, would be to take all these guys that are in little pots, just like bump these up into four to six inch pots until I was ready to use them, and bump those four inch annuals up to six inch pots also, but I didn't have time. Like I said, it's what I consider the overstock, so I'm going to go ahead and plant this up. It's not going to look amazing, but this is like the last of all of my overflow and clearance plants, so... From here and on, I hope we won't be saying <laughs> with many of my videos, like, this isn't going to look great because it's, you know, clearance plants or sad plants. But, yeah, I'm going to do that. I've already gone ahead and put in some slow-release fertilizer, and uh, I'm going to top dress this with a nice fresh layer of soil and pull these weeds out. Should look different <laughs> when I'm done. I don't know about better, but different. I went ahead and made sure that, oh, you guys are so thirsty. I don't usually like to plant things when they're this thirsty, but I'm just trying to get this done. It's also, it's surprisingly cool today, so I'm not as concerned about it. Coleus are tough, but, so in the front here, these are the Alabama Sunset, which are some of my favorite coleus, for reasons you will not understand from looking at these right now, but they get, like, a nice pink tone to their foliage, not to, like, the undersides of their foliage and to their stems. And then there's a trusty rusty in the back. This one right here, it'll get nice and red in the sun, but it'll maintain more of this green in the shade. Uh, so it's going to be green with red in there. It's going to look pretty. It'll be a nice backdrop. A Persian shield back here, which, you know, I'm a huge fan of. And I also have one of these Color Blaze Sedona coleuses from Proven Winners. And it's right here, a much more red foliage. These are, I'm going to get these done so they'll be watered and look better. But first, I need to go get the rest of the plants. Alright, so these guys were more dehydrated than I realized once I was looking at them, not through the camera. So I went ahead and I watered them very thoroughly and gave them about half an hour, 45 minutes to rehydrate a little bit. You don't, the reason you don't want to plant your things when they're dehydrated is because so the cell wall structures that come all the way up here in these stems they're very bendable and breakable and they can bruise very easily and then you can lose whatever's above that 
That being said, I am going to end up pretty much topping all of these off by at least half. I may let the coleus go for a few days and let some of their foliage on their stems fill out a little bit more so that there's more leaf there, more surface area to take in sunlight and photosynthesize and so that that process will go a little bit more quickly. Um, but I mean, generally, if you make your cut about a third to a half of the way up, just above like your fifth to sixth nodes, then you'll get a fuller plant. And that's not like an exact number. That's just generally where I go when they get this linky. But yeah, so this is the overall setup. I know it looks garbagey. I was surprised. I thought I had more overstock, as I was saying, but it turns out it was just uh, two variegated sun impatience and a six pack of sun impatience. And then three of those four coleus, the other ones were clearance. Everything else in here were clearance plants. So that's good. It's reassuring. I didn't overbuy this year, not by much. I still have this coleus here. Pardon the picture. If things aren't in focus, I can't see my screen at all because the sun's in it. But this is the stained glasswork luminous, luminant, lumin, yes, luminous coleus. It's a really pretty coleus. Uh, it doesn't get quite as big as some of the others. And I believe that's what this guy is here. Gosh, everybody's thirsty. Are my drippers not working? I'm going to check that because it's not that hot out for things to be wilty like this. Um, I think that these are the same. I can't remember. Usually when I do a planter in a video, I take the tags and I tuck them down in the back so I can remember, but I didn't do that with this one. If they're not the same, they're very similar. Look at him. You think you're being helpful? You're not being helpful, Toby. You're in the way, bud. Toby, move. Oh, I do not want to give you a bath. Move, 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 move. I love my dogs, but man, they're always so curious. And I, sometimes I forget to put them inside while I'm doing these things. All right, now that's all filled in. Nice, fresh mix in there. I'm going to go ahead and cut these guys back. And everything's planted. I'm going to cut them back and water them in. Like I said, I don't know where, or not I don't know where, but my snippers. I need new ones, so just using my kitchen scissors for this. Not the greatest way to go, but it'll work. And nothing I'm cutting here is woody, so I'm not, not too concerned about it. As long as I'm using something that's sterile and sharp. It's fine. Okay, that's all done. Isn't it pretty? Just kidding. So I cut the uh, impatience back. And then, like I said before, with the coleus, I really just kind of want to wait for these lower leaves to fill out a little bit more, which really will probably just be like a day or two. And I'll top those off too. And they'll fill out and get more bushy. Focus. Goodness, camera. So what's in here? I already showed you the coleus. There's some sun impatience, variegated sun impatience. There's that pretty coleus in the front. I also have a uh, variegated... Tragiscantha or Secretia in here, Wandering You, a, uh, another Clarence Verbena, I managed to find another one of those. Then I have this uh, Asclepius here, this is the Curasavaca, the more tropical-ish variety. Had one of those that was on Clarence, I actually picked up two of those on Clarence, the other one's in a butterfly container pot that I put together, that'll be out in a few days. Not that pretty, but give it some time, it'll look great. You can do a lot with Clarence plants, it's one of the things I love about them, it just requires a little bit more patience. Oh, forgot to breathe while I was talking. Okay, so next I was going to repot this Heliconia. This, this is the Heliconia Hirsuta Casta Flores. Uh, the only problem, though, is I'm out of gravel. I'm out of lava stone, which is funny because I had excess from doing that cactus planter. But anyways, I don't always worry about having gravel on the bottom of my planters. But with Heliconias, I really want that drainage there for winter storage. Because my grow area... I can keep it fairly warm now that I keep it wrapped in plastic, but not warm enough that I'm confident that if these get watered as much as like the orchids, if water splashes on them a lot, that they won't rot. So that soil needs to drain very, very, very quickly. So that will have to wait, which is fine. No big deal. I am getting some excellent growth out of the crotons this year. They are doing fantastic. I really like when they start to get this open shape to the bottom. I don't know why. I just, I just do. I know that doesn't look that cool, but I like it, especially if I give this a couple more years and yeah, that's going to look neat. All right. And to end things, I have a question for you and an answer for someone else. I like to plant a lot of milkweed, the native, and then the annual, annual for where I live. But every single year I have the same problem. You see it? Yeah. All kinds of little critters start living on them, and you can't spray them. Or I should say you shouldn't spray them, because this is the host plant to the monarch butterflies for their larvae, for the caterpillars. So I don't want chemicals on here, like of any kind at all. 
But like I was saying, every year they end up getting covered with these, there's a combination of aphids, ants, and then the larva of the milkweed beetle. As far as I can figure, I think the only solution is just to try and blast them off with a hose, or maybe use like double stick tape and remove them manually. Anything else I do, even blast them off with a hose, I don't want to do that because right about now, the monarchs are starting to do their thing. They're getting going, making babies, so there are potentially going to be eggs on the plants. I can expect them very closely, but I don't want to knock any of them off. Yeah, basically, if anybody has any tips or tricks on these guys, I mean, I've talked to a lot of people, a lot of experts about these, even at, like, the botanical gardens here in the Missouri Botanical Gardens. And, I mean, everybody pretty much just says the same thing. They're like, DE powder, soapy water. I'm like, okay, I could do that, but that's going to potentially hurt the butterflies, the monarch caterpillars, and that kind of defeats the purpose of having these plants. I do also grow them just because I think they're pretty, but a large part of it is for those butterflies. So let me know uh, if you have this problem or if you have any tips and tricks. And lastly, part of the mess, I have been repotting things like insanity the last couple of days. So this bird's nest fern... I did a video not too terribly long ago, or I guess it was, it was a little while ago, it was in the winter time, uh, so many videos ago from this one, about the bird's nest fern, and somebody commented saying, okay, it, well, but it looks like you're going to be repotted, I need to repot mine, why didn't you talk about that? Well, there are a couple reasons. One of the reasons is that I don't really think it needs to be repotted quite yet, and um, I want to mount this to wood. I just haven't been able to find a piece of driftwood that I like to mount it to. So that's why I didn't talk about the repotting of this plant. But to answer that person's question, to repot this, go ahead and mix up a peaty mix, something that will retain some moisture but not stay soaking for too terribly long. These are epiphytes. They don't need a super nutrient-rich soil. Yeah, as I was saying, in the past, when I have repotted my bird's nest fern, I'll use a peaty type of soil mix, I'll usually add a little bit of sand to it and sometimes some orchid bark, just to make sure that there's the air pockets in there. But it'll still hold on to some moisture and not stay sopping wet for too terribly long. So that seems to be one of the kind of tricky things with the Asplidium nidus, the bird's nest fern, is that they like a lot of humidity, they like to be watered frequently, but if you don't have heat and airflow to go in there with those things, then they rot. And it's because, like I was saying, they don't need a super nutrient-rich soil mixture that that's why to just use, go ahead and use something that has a fair amount of peat in it, which I usually try to avoid because of environmental reasons, but unfortunately it's just part of the hobby. I'm trying to find ways around it. You could try using like a cocoa peat blend. The thing is that the coconut fiber, the coconut type of soil mixes is neutral and it's just going to take on the pH of pretty much whatever water you're using or fertilizer and it's not going to maintain any acidity. So even though these don't necessarily take up a ton of nutrients from their soil, it still needs to be slightly on the acidic side of things, at least for me, because I have very, very, very alkaline water. That's what that's all about. Sorry I didn't address that in that video. My apologies. I really am looking forward to getting this guy mounted, though. I have all my supplies. I just need the piece of driftwood, which is the most critical part. And I need to get on that because time's kind of running out here. I mean, not really, but sort of. Oh, and lastly, really big exciting news. I mean, for me and my nerdy plant brain. I was going to do a separate video on this, and I may still because it was a little bit complicated, but this agave here, I couldn't identify it. It was just sold as an assorted tropical, and then the person from the grower said that it's an agave, and I was like, okay, I need to know more. I do this YouTube thing, and I need the names for the plants. Uh, excuse you. Excuse you! There has been so much air traffic today, I don't know what the deal is with that. So... I did a ton of digging around. I basically, I like started with searching for variegated agaves and just narrowed it down by the shape and characteristics. And from what I've been able to find, this is agave siciliana, uh, variegata, I think was, I think it's just the variegata. I don't think it was like silver moon or anything like that. A tropical agave, and um, I absolutely love it. It should just be fine here in this potting. It, I'm not worried about it. Now, eventually, they, these plants will outgrow this container, but like I've mentioned before, with house plants, these all go inside during the wintertime. I want to repot them every couple of years anyways. Big Peruvianus, that's going to stay in here. This is its permanent home. But, you know, the agaves and then the euphorbia back there, no, they're going to outgrow this and I'll have to pull them. Not that big of a deal. It's actually kind of fun. To me, that's just like, hey, if the plants are doing well and they're growing, that's a good thing. So I was excited to figure that out. Agave, Siciliana, tropical agave. Looks like sometimes they're trunking and there's a lot of characteristics and it's, it's a neat plant. But man, it took me forever 
to figure it out from looking at pictures online. Oh my gosh, really? Another one? They're going really fast. Because the majority of variegated agaves, if you just type in variegated agave into Google, you get agave americana and um, a lot of other varieties that have like wider leaves to them or they have they're, they have the, you know, the teeth running up and down the leaves. And this didn't match any of those things. But figured it out. And uh, I'm excited about that. I guess I just explained the whole thing. That doesn't need its own video anymore. So, yeah, good news. I mean, to me. You guys may not care, but I was excited. I really enjoy having a name to go with the plants. It just, it makes it easier to care for them. Like, I, I really don't like when things are sold as assorted. It drives me crazy. Um, also, I mean, I know I'm constantly talking about these hydrangeas, but just... I mean, oh my goodness, look at these. Just huge. I love the paniculatas. They're getting, like, too big for their britches, though. I'm, I'm going to leave them. I'm not going to cut the flowers off, but, like, they're leaning. And remember in the garden tour that was not too long ago, I was talking about how it rained a lot, and then the flowers drooped, and they're so heavy that they're not, they're not standing back up. It's also time for me to come down here and cut back this sun impatient it's pretty much around August is when it's time to give a lot of the annuals a trim. They start to get leggy and they just need a little bit of help. Oh, look at you. Love the flowers on the mimosa trees. They make me so, so, so happy. Things are looking pretty good over here in the Serenity Garden. Philodendrum binipifitatum. Never going to be able to say that. Solemn Philodendrum. It's doing great. You know, you repot these guys and they respond so quickly. And that's one of the things I love about them. And then here is that little bonsai put together with the Aurelia looking nice. My Easter, or I'm sorry, this is the Schlumbergara, whatever. It's the Thanksgiving cactus. I think it's actually time for me to go ahead and move this guy to a little bit more sun. I like for them to have just a slight tinge of purple on them and uh, the sun's shifting. So I think I just need to scoot it or move it, but it's looking pretty good. I don't think it needs to be repotted this year, probably next year. What am I doing? We just did a garden tour. Wow. These are probably gonna end up getting their own plant spotlight. I'm pretty blown away with the castor beans and the brinsis. I mean, it's, it's a good performer and I love the foliage. It's so pretty. You're getting pretty huge, too. Oh, my goodness. Garbage planters looking good. I mostly just wanted to point out, look at all this new growth coming up here out of the cordolin. Yeah, and look at that. See, same thing on this, this milkweed here. Look at that. They're just, they're absolutely everywhere. I, they're just covered. Look at that. Look at that. That's disgusting. But like I said, I don't know that there's a solution, so I think I just kind of have to live with it, because... I don't know. I don't know what else to do. I guess there's, um, uh, ladybugs. Maybe I'll order a whole bunch of ladybugs and let those go. Or soldier beetles. The, um, uh, why can't I talk? You can order the soldier beetle larvae and they, um, they, they eat a lot of these things. Maybe, maybe I'll do that. I, that's the only thing I can think of. That might be what I have to do. Let me know. All right. It's time. Time to go ahead and wrap things up. Up. Not a crazy busy week. I d actually did a lot of potting of things and you'll get to see that in a few days. But it was a fun week. That's that's the best part. I had fun. The weather was pretty decent. We had rain, like a substantial amount of rain. Whenever it's been raining lately, it's just like drizzle for a few minutes. So that was really nice because we needed it so incredibly badly. I hope everybody's doing well. Oh, and somebody had messaged me, and they multiple people have messaged me before actually talking about how they have a question or they want to show me something, and they wish that they could share those things on YouTube. Uh, YouTube doesn't do, like, video messaging or anything like that. Uh, once I have 10,000 subscribers, which might be a very long time, I can put up a community tab, and I think you can share pictures on there. I don't. I know I can put pictures on there. I don't know about other people. Uh, there are various ways, but... I have my social media down below, which I always say at the end of the videos, but it's down there and I'm most active on Instagram and you can contact me on there. And I have, I, I finally learned what that blue symbol in the corner means. It means that somebody sent me a message. So sorry to everybody that it took me a couple months to get back to you. I didn't know, but now I do. So that's a really good way if there's something that like you want to show me or that needs more explanation that, that you can't do from like typing it out in the comments on YouTube. Like I said, that's all down there in the description, my Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. But like I said, I'm mostly on Instagram. Okay, now, done. Sorry, just wanted to make sure I covered that. 
I hope everybody's doing well. The social media is down below, which I've said five times. Don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up if you liked it. I appreciate it. It helps me and it helps the channel a lot. It really, really does have an impact, so thank you. Subscribe as well. I upload multiple times a week. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. Or else YouTube doesn't tell you when I upload new videos. And comment down below, because I love talking to everybody. I really do enjoy it. Even if I don't get back to you for a little while, that's because I don't like using my phone to respond to comments. Because half the time I do it doesn't show whether or not I actually responded. It's complicated. YouTube is just, it's very glitchy for the last, I was going to say recently, but really it's like the last couple of years. So it has to wait till I can get to a computer, but I still see the comments even if it takes me a couple days to get back to you. So sorry about that, but... I love it. Say hi and let me know what you're doing in your garden. Oh, and this is a trusty Rusty which was planted earlier in the video with the Alexander Palm. This one's been planted a little bit longer. You can see that green with that red in there. I meant to show that earlier. Pretty plant. All right, but most importantly, everybody, as always, keep on growing. Bye-bye.